girls to never ever have enough time to play at all. You know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes. Everyone I've got the layout kicked back over on its back. And I've got my CT coils in. Yeah. You can see I also labeled the turnouts. That's uh, control point one. That's that's my dual gauge turnout there. And you can see the CT coil wire comes around here. Uh, there's my second turnout. They all go into the Cat5 cable, which then goes into the block detector which then goes into a tower controller. Uh, it's looking pretty good so far. I've got my other three turnouts are on this side over here. So they come into the same there and that would be lines five, six, and seven, line eight is not going to be used, at least not that I'm aware of at this point. Uh, you can see I've got some ethernet cables there connecting the nodes. Now those can be no less than one foot in length. And those are exactly one foot, I think. Uh, I hope that works. If not, I'll have to get something different, 18 inches or something. But, uh, it's coming along pretty good. My wire for my tortoises did not come in today, so I still can't do anything with my tortoises. So once again, I'm kind of kind of spinning my wheels, waiting for something to come in the mail. Uh, if I haven't mentioned, I live in the middle of nowhere, uh, so I just can't run to the hobby store and pick up stuff. I'm at least 150 miles away from a hobby store so for me pretty much everything has to come in through the mail but I'll show you more when I've done more got the rest of my CT coils in I've got the blocks labeled now uh, so you can see CT coils for block one block two block three uh, Block fours over here. You can see the braided wire there. That's that's for the the dual track. So there's two feeder wires coming off the dual track for for rail B. Uh, block fives over here somewhere, and then block six, seven, and eight are on this end of the layout. Now, I've got, I've got some more wires hooked up to my nodes. Uh, I've got the ribbon cable going to the block detectors. All that should be good to go. Uh, I've got the PowerPoint. I'm, I'm still kind of messing around with where exactly I want to put it. Uh, and I'm probably going to leave everything a little bit flexible until I get it all wired. I'm approximately... I don't know, I'm probably 80, 85% uh, fully wired. Again, I'm still waiting on my, my piano wire for my tortoises before I can do any of that. And I'm, I'm actually going to do just as soon as, I, I, think, uh, I think all I've got left to do now is there's, there's places here on the block detectors. I don't know if I can point that out to you. But right here, uh, the DCC track power goes in there, so I've got to I've got to drop a line in there to those to make sure the the block detectors are are monitoring the the DCC power. And I did make a loco net cable so I can make use of my UP3 panel. Right now, I've just got everything routed on the back side of the layout. It's kind of a mess at the moment. I'm going to clean that up as soon as I get a chance. Uh, there's my LCC buffer, USB buffer. That's what is going to allow me to to make use of, of a computer and 
I've, I've got a Raspberry Pi for that, which is a very small computer if you're not familiar with it, but it's, it's a four gigabyte of RAM. The only thing I'm going to use that computer for is, is for the layout. Uh, don't think I'll use it for anything else. It'll just run JMRI. That's what I did last night. I got it all downloaded, got the Pi booted up. Uh, I think I paid, I can't remember exactly, but less than $100 for, for that particular electronic component that's going to be the brains of the entire layout. Uh, even my big layout, you know, if this, this is a module for the bigger layout. But that's where I'm at right now. Uh, Super Bowl is getting ready to start, so I'm going to take a break and see if it's a game or not. If it's not a game, I might come back out and finish what I've got and see if I can get some JMRI completed and see if I can detect some trains. The Flipomatics got the layout back right side up. And I believe I've got all of my wiring completed for block detection. So I thought I would go ahead and, and show the rest of my setup. So here is my Raspberry Pi. That is a computer. And then this connection is what's connecting the layout to the computer via a LCC USB port and then there's the screen for my Raspberry Pi. I have not opened up JMRI yet but uh, it's in that folder right there. That's the only thing I've got on the Raspberry Pi is JMRI and I've, and I've downloaded of course Firefox so that's the only two things that that computer has on it. Uh, of course I've got a wireless keyboard and mouse <clears throat> and then I've got my laptop so that when things go wrong I can still search independently and have two different screens and figure out what I did wrong. So I'm actually getting ready to make the connections. I have not turned anything on yet. I thought for, for full disclosure and uh, just for fun I would go ahead and apply power uh, live on camera to see how things look. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now. I'm gonna crawl underneath the layout. Uh, I won't do that until, uh, until I won't turn the camera back on until I'm there so I don't make people sick by jerking around and stuff. So stand by. I'm underneath the layout. I've got a little bit of light. Uh, I apologize if the camera's too close. I can't really tell if it's not focusing on what I've got it on or if it's my eyes too close to the screen. Uh, but if it's not focusing, I apologize. But here, here's the connection coming from the computer. And it's going into the PowerPoint and then from the PowerPoint into the nodes. And then the PowerPoint connection is there. So all I should have to do is plug that in and if I'm lucky all of the smoke will stay inside the electronics. So here I go. Hopefully I can do this. Under the layout, got a little bit of light shining up. So here's the connection coming from the computer and going into the PowerPoint, from the PowerPoint into the nodes. So all I have to do is add power. So here I go. Try not to shake around too much. Okay, 
don't see any smoke coming out. It looks like one of my block detectors is detecting something. That's a good sign. Alright. Maybe a little anticlimactic, but I enjoyed it. Before I started configuring nodes, uh, I wanted to double check and make sure that all of my wiring was correct. Uh, in other words, you know, I, I didn't have any wires crossed and, you know, block three was actually wired to, to channel five or something crazy like that. Uh, everything is correct. Uh, the only issue I have is you can see that one LED right there on that block detector glaring at me, mocking me. Even though the layout's upside down, it's reporting that the block is occupied, which is an impossibility. So here I've I've traced it. It's it's CP6 is what it is. I've changed out the CT coil. Uh, I'm just kind of at a loss for what's going on there. I've also changed out the, you know, I've swapped the orange and white tracer wire for the blue and white tracer wire. The light goes out. So it's clearly not the block detector. It's got to be some function of the CT coil itself. I've also changed out the CT coil. I apologize for the hard edit. My battery died. Uh, but in the time that it took me to change my battery, uh, I'm saying that facetiously, uh, after about another week of asking questions online about uh, this particular circuitry and what could possibly be causing the problem, uh, I have got it finally figured out what was wrong. And so you can see now my, uh, my LED's out and it's no longer reporting the block is occupied. Uh, so, so what was going on is I had two feeder drops on that particular section of track. Uh, up here where you can see the, that cluster of four wires coming out there there's a section of track I know you can't see it because I'm upside down but that connects over here to CP6 that's actually all one block and just you know for whatever reason I dropped two feeders uh, and I, I misread the instructions on the block detector the BOD8 and you have to have all feeder wires run through the CT coil uh, or at least one one rail either rail A or rail B uh, if you have more than one drop per that block one of those rail feeder wires has to run through the CT coil so if you have four drops on you know 200 foot of, of rail, one of those, each of those feeder blocks has to go through the CT coil. Uh, and I did not have that, so where this, these feeder wires over here were going straight to the bus and not going through the CT coil, and so it was messing up the Oh, probably I don't know exactly what what it was that was doing it. I'm assuming that it was, you know, the power running through the rails was was showing a a resistance that shouldn't have that was different than the power that was running through the CT coil over here. So at any rate, I've got that figured out. It's it's working like it's supposed to. Uh, of course, my original plan of how to run the wires neatly has gone out the window because now I'm going to have to bring these two wires over here to connect with these wires and then another set of wires probably back over here 
back into this collection point. Uh, not really what I wanted to do. It's not going to be neat. Uh, of course, it's, it's looking more and more like a bowl full of spaghetti all the time. But it's going to work. So I'm going to do that real quick. Try and make this a little neater with the wiring. Uh, use the flip matic and go topside on the layout and, and then start finally configuring some nodes. <laughs>